All right, your exam is in a week and you spent the whole semester living at large, procrastinating and basically doing anything to put off your study until the last minute. Classic. Well, the time has come. So in this video, I'm gonna outline the best methods that we can use while cramming to give ourselves the best opportunity to ace that exam in seven days time. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Harry. And what I've got for you today in this video is how to effectively study for an exam in seven days time using evidence-based revision tactics. This isn't going to be a zero to 100 method. This is a guide on how to use practical methods to learn the necessary high yield content to ensure that you're not only passing your exam, but actually doing well. I'll start with some of the common mistakes I think most students make. Why we need to be specific and only focus on high yield pieces of information and then how we can actually implement these into a study routine so that we can ace that exam with minimal prep time. So the three most common mistakes that I think students make are as follows. One is that we don't use the appropriate study methods. And no, I'm not talking about active recall and spaced repetition, although we probably should be using them anyway. What I'm talking about is that we're not actually changing the way that we study considering the exam is so close. Now, what I mean by this is that we just use the same study methods that we've used all semester, only we implement more of it. And although this is great for consolidating our knowledge and building up a big bank of information, but it's not good at actually learning the information smarter, faster, and more efficiently. The second mistake is that we tend to become too linear and completion focused. And what I mean by this is that we tend to find a topic we don't know and start from the start and build a nice foundational layer. And then we slowly add a little bit more onto that until eventually we get to a point where we understand the topic pretty well and we're pretty comfortable with it. But this might take a week or two weeks and it's great for a whole semester because we can do this over a long period of time with like six or seven or eight different topics. However, we only have a week. By the time the exam comes around, we're gonna know 100% of maybe one topic and then like 30% of all the other topics, which is why it's crucial to be focusing on high yield information, which I'm going to touch on in just a moment. Now, the third mistake is not studying the right content. Now, we've all been there where we have a topic that we really, really love, but we also actually know a lot about it. So we branch out and we branch out and try and understand all these really tiny details and all these niche little bits of information. But none of that content is ever gonna be on an exam. It's like being in year nine and having a maths test coming up. And you really, really like maths. So you go above and beyond to start learning things like calculus and all these really in-depth math theory. However, you don't actually study what you're learning in year nine. So this actually results in you sitting in the exam and praying and praying that somehow these high level maths topics will come up that you know really, really well. And that only a small amount of that exam will actually be the year nine maths content, which then means that you actually end up not doing really well in the exam, which then probably brings us to the question, well, how do we actually optimize our study to focus on these high yield pieces of information? And I'm going to touch on that in just a moment. However, what I wanna talk about first is I wanna elaborate a little bit more on what high yield information actually is. So the way I like to think about high yield information is I like to link it to something called the Pareto Principle. And you may have heard of this before, or you may have heard of something called the 80-20 rule. It's basically the same thing. And the way it's explained is that 80% of our results generally come from 20% of our effort. So to give you an example, say there's a man running a fruit stand, right? And he has this really, really great fruit and it tastes delicious. However, he never gets many customers actually coming to the stand despite the fruit tasting so good. So what he does is that he decides to dismiss the fruit because he knows that's good and instead chooses to focus on that 20% minority, which is the advertising and marketing of his stall. So he spends the next month making the changes that need to be made to ensure that he is advertising his store at a better fashion, marketed towards better customers. And so what actually happens is that in the future or over those next couple months afterwards, his sales skyrocket. He's got people lining up down the street, around the corner, people are phoning him up wanting to do click and collect, wanting to do deliveries, the works, and he is booming. That is the basis of high yield information. So if we link this back to studying for our exam, we already know how we're going to study, right? We already know what's going to work best for us. So we don't need to focus on that. What we do need to focus on is the actual information that we're choosing to study. 
because that's the kicker here. That's our 20% minority that's going to ultimately yield us the greatest results on the exam. Because what we're doing here is that we're aiming for breadth of knowledge, not depth. It's much more valuable to know six topics at say 70 or 80% as opposed to three topics at 100%. So being able to identify high yield pieces of information is actually pretty straightforward. So I'm not sure about you, but whenever we start a new topic at uni, the first few slides of that are always related to outlining the learning objectives that we need to know. So I find this is a great place to start. Find these learning objectives, know exactly what they are and what they relate to, and then only focus on that information. Once we've done that, we can then move on to things like past exam papers and past tests because generally these are a good idea to explain what's already in the question bank. These questions have already been made for the last X amount of years beforehand, so they're already there to be recycled for the upcoming tests. However, I do like to steer clear on maybe last year's test or last year's exam, because generally, although they're good to give you an idea and good to practice, those questions are probably the least likely to appear because they have been used so recently. Now that we've gone through all of our learning objectives and all of our past tests and exams and any other information that may relate to what's gonna be on the test, we can then categorize all of these topics. And the way that we do this is that if we know absolutely nothing about a content, that goes in the pile over here and that's bread. Everything that we know and we can just rattle off the top of our head like that and we're really, really confident on, goes over here and it's green. Everything else in the middle is here and it's like orange or yellow or whatever color you want it to be. And it's at this point here and this point only when studying actually begins. The way that I would structure my study is that I would just create a big question bank because I find that these are the quickest, easiest way to get the most amount of content outlined and ready to study in the quickest amount of time possible. Now you can do this a number of ways, right? You can write out a big Word document and just write out a string of questions for yourself and either answer them in your head or write the answers underneath and then delete them, right? This is probably the easiest way to do it, but the way I like to do it is in Notion, I just use toggle questions. So I would just write a question with a toggle and then I hit the toggle and the answer's underneath it, hit it again and it's hidden, right? So now that we have our question banks completed and we know exactly what we're going to be going over the next seven days, we then wanna structure it in a way that we're focusing our time on the pieces of information that are the most important and so that we're not wasting time asking ourselves questions that we already know the answers to. And the way that we do this is that we wanna work backwards from the day before the exam. So say if we've got seven days and then our exam is on day eight, on day seven, we're going to put all the information that we can rattle off the top of our heads, all those green questions, all those questions and all of that content that we just know. And then all of our red questions, all of our questions that we don't understand and we really need to sit down and study because we're just totally lost on, that's day one. And then everything else can just be moved in between as you need. So what we wanna do is then we wanna start at day one and go through all of those red questions. And then once we've gone through all of them, we move them through to day two. And then at day two, we're gonna go through all of those red questions, as well as probably some of the ones that we popped in there, which were orange. And we, as we move through each day, we're gonna to go to day three, four, five, six. All of those questions are gonna progressively get lighter until hopefully by day seven, the aim is to have every question green. Our overall goal with this system isn't to learn 100% of every topic. What we're trying to do is that we're trying to focus on that 70 to 80% of what we think is the most pertinent information that's going to appear on the exam. And then anything that falls out of that 70 to 80% of our knowledge, generally we can probably logic our way to the answer because our foundation and what we already know can steer us in the right direction. If you've got a lot out of this video, please don't forget to hit that like button and hit that subscribe down the bottom because it makes a huge difference to supporting the channel. And that brings us to the end of another one. I really hope you found this quite valuable and got a lot out of it. Feel free to leave a comment down below about what exams you're studying for or how you would study for an exam in seven days time because I'd love to hear about it. Well, until next time, have a good one. Good luck with your exams and I'll see you later. Bye.